Hello everyone. For this video lecture, we will learn about directional derivatives and gradients. First, let us recall that for a function in one variable, say y equals f of x, the derivative of the function f evaluated at x equals a is interpreted as the slope of the tangent line to the curve y equals f of x at the point p, which is a f of a. When we extend this to a function in two variables, say z equals f of x, y, we have the idea of the partial derivatives. So getting the partial derivative of z with respect to x evaluated at x equals a and y equals b will give us the slope of the tangent line to the curve of intersection of z equals f of x, y, and the plane y equals b, and the point a, B, F of A, B. Geometrically, so we have the surface F and the plane Y equals B. The curve of intersection of this plane and the surface is this one. The intersection of the plane and the surface at A, B is given by this point. Now, the slope of the tangent line passing through this point is given by the partial derivative of f with respect to x. We can also interpret this as the rate of change in the direction parallel to the x-axis. Now, getting the partial derivative of z with respect to y, evaluated at x equals a and y equals b, will give us the slope of the tangent line to the curve of intersection of z equals f of x, y, and the plane x equals a at the point p. Geometrically, if we have the surface f and the plane x equals a, the curve of intersection of the plane and the surface is given by this one. And the intersection of the plane and the surface at AB is given by this point. Now, the slope of the tangent line passing through this point at this curve of intersection is just the partial derivative of f with respect to y. This is also the rate of change of the function in the direction parallel to the y-axis. So, in general... When getting partial derivatives, we are just getting the rate of change in the direction parallel to the coordinate axis x, y, and z. So what if we want to know the rate of change in this direction, or in this direction, or in any particular direction? So that's the role of the directional derivative. So a directional derivative is just a rate of change towards a particular direction. For an illustration, let us consider this surface defined by z equals f of x, y, and a unit vector in the direction theta. If we have a plane containing the unit vector in the direction theta, its curve of intersection with the surface is given by this. Now, let this be a point on the surface. So the slope of the tangent line passing through this point or the rate of change of the function value at this point in the direction theta is just the directional derivative. In particular, if we have a function z equals f of x, y, the partial derivative of z with respect to x is just the rate of change of the function value at a point in the direction theta equals 0. So how are we going to compute for this directional derivative? So given with z equals f of x, y, and a unit vector in theta direction, so that is u equal to a vector with components cosine theta and sine theta. So the formula for finding the directional derivative is just the dot product of the vector containing the partial derivatives of your function and 
the unit vector. This expression is also equivalent to the partial derivative of f with respect to x times cosine theta plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times sine theta. If we are going to evaluate this directional derivative at the point x not y not, so that is just the rate of change of f at the point x not y not in the direction of u, where u is a unit vector. Now, let's consider an example. So, given a function f of x, y equal to 4 minus 2x squared minus y squared, we are asked to solve for the directional derivative in the direction theta equals pi over 3 and theta equals pi. So, first, let us recall that the formula for finding the directional derivative is given by this expression. So, the partial derivative of f with respect to x is just negative 4x times cosine theta plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is negative 2y, then times sine theta. Again, the directional derivative of f is negative 4x cosine theta minus 2y sine theta. So, in the direction theta equals pi over 3, we know that cosine pi over 3 is equal to 1 half and sine pi over 3 is equal to square root of 3 over 2. So, substituting those values into this expression, we will arrive at negative 4x times 1 half minus 2y times square root of 3 over 2. Simplifying this expression, will give us negative 2x minus square root of 3y. In the direction theta equals pi, note that cosine pi is equal to negative 1 and sine pi is equal to 0. Again, substituting those values to this expression will give us negative 4x times negative 1 minus 2y times 0. This is equal to 4x. So for an illustration, the graph of 4 minus 2x squared minus y squared is an elliptic paraboloid. And the point 1, 1, 1 is on the surface. So here, we want to know the rate of change of the function value at the point 1, 1, 1 at the direction theta equals pi over 3 and the rate of change of the function value at the point 1, 1, 1 in the direction theta equals pi. So, if x and y is equal to 1, so substituting this to this expression, the directional derivative of f at 1, 1 in the direction theta equals pi over 3 is equal to negative 2 minus square root of 3. Notice that this is always less than 0. So here, it will give us a descent in the direction of pi over 3. In the direction theta equals pi, directional derivative is equal to 4x. Evaluating this at 1, 1 will give us 4, which is always greater than 0. Hence, it is an ascent in the direction of pi. So now, I'm going to introduce to you the gradient. So, it is just the direction of the steepest ascent, and it is denoted by del f. So, the gradient is just a vector composed of its partial derivatives. We have, we have seen this formula before in the formula of the directional derivative. Hence, the formula in finding the directional derivative is just the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. Again, the formula for finding the directional derivative is just the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. So here are some remarks. Given a function f at a point p and in the direction of vector a, if your directional derivative is positive, the function is increasing at p in the direction of a. If your directional derivative is negative, 
then the function is decreasing at p in the direction of a. And if your directional derivative is equal to 0, then there is no change in the function value at p in the direction of a. So let's consider an example f of x, y is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. We're going to determine the directional derivative of f at 4, negative 3 in the direction of 12, negative 5. So take note, we need the unit vector and the gradient. So first, the unit vector in the direction of 12, negative 5 is equal to 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. How do we get this? So the first component of your vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. And the magnitude of this vector is equal to 13. So that is 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. Next, we need to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x and the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So for the partial derivative of f with respect to x, so treating y as constant will give us x over square root of x squared plus y squared. And for the partial derivative of f with respect to y, we're going to treat x as constant. So we, we, we will arrive at y o, over square root of x squared plus y squared. This is for you to verify. We now evaluate the partial derivatives of f at 4, negative 3. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x at 4, negative 3 is equal to 4 over 5. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y at 4, negative 3 is equal to negative 3 over 5. Therefore, the gradient of f at 4, negative 3 is a vector composed of 4 over 5 and negative 3 over 5. Now, so this is the direction of the greatest rate of change. Recall again that the formula for finding the directional derivative of f is the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. We have computed for the gradient of f at 4, negative 3, and that is a vector composed of 4 over 5 and negative 3 over 5. And the unit vector is equal to the vector composed of 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. So getting the dot product of these two vectors, we have so 4 times 12, that, that's 48, over 5 times 13, that is 65. So we have 48 over 65 plus, so negative 3 times negative 5 is equal to positive 15. 5 times 13 is equal to 65. So 48 over 65 plus 15 over 65 is equal to 63 over 65. Since the directional derivative is greater than 0, this means that the function is increasing in the given direction. What if we have a function of three variables? So we're just going to use the same method. We need the gradient, which is composed of the partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, and the partial derivative of f with respect to c. So that is the gradient. We also need the direction. So the direction is the unit vector u. So the formula for finding the directional derivative is the same. So that is just the dot product of the gradient and the unit vector. So that's all. Thank you. Hello, Math Monday and Beecher. To check out more lecture videos, click here. And to supplement your learning, don't forget to answer the exercises which you can find in the description box below. Enjoy and stay safe.